Well, hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here. And today we're talking about a very special vehicle to me. In this tent back here is my first ever car vehicle truck. It's a, it's, it's a truck, spoiler alert. Um, but of course, you know, it's always called your first car. My first automobile, if you will. I've kept it all these years because it's, uh, it's more than just a cool truck to me. It's got a lot of sentimental value and we'll talk about that uh, as we go through and I show you guys what it is. And there, there's a reason why it has its own personal tent back here. It's, it was an exceptionally unusual vehicle for a, uh, a child of my age to have throughout high school and almost drive every day to college. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and peek on behind the curtain. I'm flying solo today, so you have to forgive some of the camera work if it isn't great. But inside, oh man, it's really warm in here. But behold, oh wow, this is gonna be fun trying to get all this in the shot. This is my very first car, truck, whatever you wanna call it. A 1968 C10 pickup. This is, uh, <laughs> She's got a lot of memories in there from my high school years and the like. I know we're crammed in here right now, but there's a reason why we're in this tent and not out and about just yet. We are gonna be pulling her out later on in the video and doing some work to her because she does need some. There you go, you can see that nice 67 to 72 front end there. Um, this is the second generation of the C10. This is when they started to go with more of the beauty trucks if you will i think that's what they called some of these designs as you got into the 60s and into the 70s and such and she's just man you know modern vehicles have a lot more curves and angles and stuff but there's something about just the lines on these cars and vehicles from the 60s let me tell you so we're gonna take a brief walk around right now and then we'll talk about what we're planning on doing to her in this video so we'll check out the interior first then we'll go ahead and take a peek under the hood so what's cool about this is that the interior is actually mostly original the only thing in here that's been replaced is the seat cover um, this is new the one that it came with was one of those cloth seat covers if you look up 1968 seat and interior you'll get an idea of what uh of what I'm talking about and it was all deteriorated and stuff and in fact what was on here was a cover and then underneath the cover was the actual cloth which is so we got this nice vinyl seat cover here that uh yes it does stick to my thighs when it's hot which it always is down here but you know what it's spill proof and it's easy to clean um this hump is weird this has been here since we got the truck we tried to fix it uh but it's still here you know what extra cushion for the driver so that that's fine you don't see it when you're sitting on it you know and the paint here on the dash, oh, let me get in here. Whoo, it's hot. This paint on the dash is original, as is the paint on the head. Everything on the inside, all the paint on the inside is original, with the exception of the interior door paint that is new. But the steering wheel's original. All this is, uh, this isn't the OG radio, as you can tell. This is a modern replacement to hook up to a, um, an iPod and such so going to high school that was a requirement we do have the OG radio it's just uh, chilling in the shop right now doesn't work but this one does this obviously is a replacement um, there was a bit of a gash in the paint back here from where the original uh, Chevrolet logo should have been rather than repainting the whole glove box and getting rid of the original paint we just put this piece of wood over where the paint had peeled off with the original Chevy logo let me slap this reproduction logo on there. And what's really cool is that the build sheet is still on the glove box. It's not in the best of shape, but this was, I mean, it's not a build sheet. I think it's what an S, SPID, yes, yeah, service parts identification sheet. So when these guys would order the trucks back in the day, all the additional uh, little trimmings would go into here. So you can see like the, with the door edge guards the chrome bumpers because a lot of these trunks have the painted bumpers and a couple other things that we can't really <laughs> make out anymore but um this is pretty rare that this is even here because a lot of these glove boxes they're 
uh, covers are pretty easy to replace on the 67 to 72 trucks and many people do but that this is still here and it's pretty cool and it is, it is the one for this truck it does have the correct uh vin number on it and oh yeah the, the, the foot right here uh ignore that that's an ice cream horn that we put on there for the goofballs uh, the accelerator had been replaced because the original one was rotted away, so we just went to AutoZone and got a chrome foot because, well, it was cheap and it looked neat. We just bolted that onto the accelerator that was left down there and all that. And of course this has been replaced. We replaced the insulation, which is pretty much rotted away under here with uh, new insulation and this floor cover here that's rubber. Again, for when you spill stuff, it's really easy to clean up. That's what I was going for here, being in high school and such. Oh yeah, the, the blinds too. The, these are the original blinds that came with the truck. And um, no mirror or anything back there. So ladies, you're just going to have to do My sister would actually take the uh, rear view mirror as we were going to school. And she would yank it over to her while she was doing her makeup. Because I did drive this to high, high school. I drove this to band camp, fellas. And let me tell y'all, if you don't notice down there, there ain't no AC. That's your AC right there. <laughs> This and 60 miles an hour down the highway, that'll get you, uh, you won't die at that point. But, ooh, look, a spider. But, um, yeah, no AC in here in band camp, you can imagine. Oh, it is a three on the tree a manual, if you couldn't tell. I learned to drive in this truck, by the way. Um, and if you don't notice by the ridiculous size of the steering wheel, it is a manual everything's manual the brakes are manual no power brakes manual transmission manual steering no power steering also i can just take the horn cover off like that and uh yeah there you go put that back on there that was always fun to do just driving down the road because you can take like half the truck apart with just uh enough strength or a screwdriver uh the keys also come out as i go down the road i'll show you that later uh, if you're wondering about miles yes it has some it says only sixteen thousand six hundred eleven. uh that's been around a couple of times methinks uh, this was repainted by the way uh, the original ones i think were silver on the outside black on the inside but this one was all bleh when we found it so you know a nice shade of rustoleum gray went over it and uh well it works by the way these seat belts uh these were not original it just had lap belts originally we didn't put these in because you know living in a car accident is pretty cool so yeah but what i was going to show you for those of you that don't have one of these trucks or if you're really young uh this right here that's the gas tank that's the seat. That's the gas tank. That's the seat. So, yeah. You can make your own conclusions about that. And it is the long bed, an eight foot truck bed, a natural truck bed, if you will. Uh, this is the fleet side, not the step side. And uh, there's a lot of side to it. So another thing too about this truck is that not only did I drive it, but we actually used it as a truck. I've hauled a lot of crap back here. There was a bed cover back here, but uh, we took that out because I had the whole truck repainted recently. Um, not, not like a crazy $20,000 paint job, just uh, I really would like the paint to stop peeling and for it to stop rusting paint job along some body work. So basically what I could afford, and that's why there's no bed cover back there too. And I'm planning on getting this uh, rhino lined or whatever so that it'll be good to go in the future so yeah i did have it painted it looks very nice right now because this, it has gone from being a truck that i drive uh almost every day when i was in high school to now being a show truck mostly and uh, that's part of what we're going to be doing here in a minute that's a real tailgate that's rust and again yeah this is gonna get that's uh we don't you know if you raise that up that becomes a non-issue you know also um that's the original license plate i'm gonna blur out the top numbers but uh it expired in 1969 i did some paperwork to make it a permanent plate and that's the original plate that came with this truck so that's uh that's super cool in my opinion Yeah, the doors don't close right. They're, they're a little bit off. But anyway, so today's video, what we're going to be doing, because there's a car show coming up, and last year this truck won its class. It, it won best truck last year, so I would very much like to do that again this year. Some improvements have to be done though, because if it come over here, first off, this antenna is not original, it's just some custom, not some custom, some universal deal. And if you can't tell, it's a little rusty. 
That's because it costs five dollars at AutoZone. So we're going to replace this with a reproduction antenna for this year of truck that should fit here perfectly. You see, there's a little, you know, little, little gap there where this thing doesn't fit at. So we're going to replace this, which that that'll take like two seconds. And I just walked back from back there, so one second. And then we are going to fill in these indentions here at the Chevrolet with uh, some white vinyl that I ordered. Yeah, I had some back there, but again, whole truck got repainted, so those got uh, sandblasted away. So we're gonna replace that with the proper white lettering, so that looks very nice. I, I really liked how it looked like beforehand, so now that I can get those and put those back in, excellente. And then we are going to paint this. Oh, these are the original hubcaps, by the way. Um, and I'm, I'm very glad I have these. If you look at a lot of the 68s that you can, oops. If you look at a lot of the 68s you can find online to buy, uh, they're missing these hubcaps. And they've, usually most of the people change these wheels out. I don't know why, because these are like the original wheels. And they replace them with a lot of modern looking wheels and such. And I mean, like, it's your truck. Do what you want with it. But I just like to make stuff look like how it's supposed to look, how it looked originally. So what we're going to do is down there we're going to take these uh, wheels and tires off and we're going to sand down this paint and then prime it and repaint all four wheels today now so all four yeah all four wheels now these tires are um um they're older than some of the kids i teach today they need to be replaced so we're going to take these off paint these don't care about getting any paint on these tires because they're going to get replaced like a day or two after that and then uh put these back on and sometime later in the week we're going to go get new tires and i might make that part of a follow-up video maybe even include the car show and all that jazz that we're going to be going in so that's the plan for the truck as far as the cosmetic stuff goes just get that back yeah yeah there we go now under the hood Oh, that's a hood. We have a V8. It was the one in the short that I posted last week. Um, what V8, you ask? Uh, uh, one of them. So this is either the 307 V8 or the 327 V8. Uh, it could be the 396, but that, that, that was a little small for a 396 in my humble opinion. What happened in 1968 is that they replaced the 283, it was a 4.7 liter V8 with the 307. So you can only get the 307 up. This is either the 307 or the 327. Now the way you normally identify this is there is a number that, where's that at? Right here. It's only stamped right there. Um, it ain't there. It's either under grime or paint. I don't know, but supposedly there's other ways you can find out. And if some of you guys can just tell from looking at it here, please let me know in the comments down below, but it's a 307 or a 327. Both have interchangeable parts, except for of course, like the internal bits, which we haven't had to change yet. This engine doesn't leak oil, doesn't burn oil. It's It's been really good. It's from freaking 1968. It's what, 50 plus years old now? It gets six miles to the gallon, but that, you know, who cares? Um, but yeah, no, it's been a really solid engine, but what we do have to do is adjust or change Mr. Vacuum Advance right there. Because if you heard in that video, it doesn't really run that well at idle. Once it gets warmed up, it's not too bad, but uh, Mr. Mr. Vacuum Advance needs some adjustments need to be needs to be replaced so that's something else that we're going to be looking at doing um in this video as well i'm actually filming this the day before we get out here and do all that because we're going to come out here early in the morning and try to get all this done in one day if we can so them's the plans and uh, you'll hear it turn up here probably in the next cut because again with the magic of editing it'll be tomorrow for you guys and you guys get to see her coming out of the tent and all that jazz. So, without further ado, let's get to work. Well, I've, uh... I found our first issue of the day, the battery's dead. Which is very weird because I ran it for half an hour last Saturday.
It's the battery. The alternator is good. That uh, that battery charger is pretty cool. I've always used a really old one that my dad has, but that's uh, a newer one I bought uh, about a year ago, and it can check the alternator, and the alternator is fine. It's the battery. Battery's four years old, and it's just a generic Walmart brand battery, so yeah. But yeah, if you hear the engine, sounds like the vacuum advance has gone bad. It's almost struggling at idle. Well, it's not almost struggling. It is struggling at idle. Uh, so now when we go wash it, the simple thing is we just don't stop it. If we do, I don't know how I'm getting back home. So let's go do that. Let me turn my air conditioning on real quick for the drive back. There we go, nice and cool.
All right, so we are finally done for the day. This is the end result. So like I said, this is just for looks mainly. So I mainly focused around the bits that the beauty rings and the hubcaps won't cover. So just right around there, I got most of the flaking off. It left behind like kind of a cool little texture. So that's, I don't know, looks pretty neat. Wasn't expecting it to come out like that. Here's the uh, beauty rings and hubcaps that we will be putting on there once this stuff cures. Um, I probably could slap it on there right now. It's still a little tacky. Rust-Oleum finishes, finishes, uh, cures pretty quickly, but we're gonna wait a couple days. Plus again, these tires are getting changed, so that's why I didn't mask them up or anything, because who cares, right? So um, this will be getting changed probably Tuesday, Wednesday-ish. But yeah, they all came out pretty nice. The antenna's on. It uh, took some finagling to do and we couldn't put the wire in because the wire, I don't know. I don't know what's up with this. This is the second reproduction antenna that I've got for this truck. And the wire is fed down to the left through the firewall. And then it comes out beneath the glove box. And that's just that, uh, yeah. The wire wouldn't fit with this. I don't know if it's because it's modern wire and probably the wire in the 60s was a little bit thinner. So maybe it was more flexible. I don't know. There's the real the rear wheels. Um, you know, for two cans, well, three cans of Rust-Oleum and a day, it's not that bad. And the letters came out looking great. We had some custom ones made beforehand uh, the first time that we had the letters on the back, but now we have actual ones. They, they look great. They came out really well. They were frustrating to get on, but once we got in the hang of ripping them off the little wax paper they were on, wasn't too bad. There's the last wheel back there. So, yep. Um, if you guys like this stuff, I'll have a follow-up video to this, hopefully, maybe next Sunday. Just let me know in the comments down below. Again, stuff I still gotta do. Still gotta get the, t the new tires. Oh, and hold up. Uh, we did not get to changing the vacuum advance today. It's 5 o'clock, and it's a, a very cool 100 and I think 10 right now. So that's, that's, it runs, it starts, we'll fix that at a later point. But that is it for today's video, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and pick all this up and put these somewhere safe. So again, if you guys wanna see more about this truck and such, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to keep doing videos on this thing. So again, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.